Hi, this is Elaine Starling, and I'm sharing insights that I received during a stroke when I had a conversation with a higher power, with God. And one of the things that was really popular right when I had my stroke was The Secret, the movie The Secret. And in The Secret, they talk extensively about the law of attraction. Hi, David. I'm so glad you could join me today. So I wondered, as I was having a stroke and I was in this conversation with God, I, I asked about this whole law of attraction thing. You know, how real is this? How, how does it actually work? Give me the skinny on this whole law of attraction thing, right? And so the information that I got back was really, really interesting to me. So I received this immediate download about how the law of attraction actually works. So imagine that everything is made up of atoms. Everything in our universe is made up of atoms, including you, spirit as well. There is a, an atom related experience to spirit. Even though we sense it as emotion, there is more to it than just emotion. There is actual embodiment when it comes to spirit. So as you are thinking of the things that you really enjoy in life and imagining what you would like to experience in your life, you are calling energy to you in the form of atoms. You are actually trying to attract that which you think about. Now, you have two different ways that you can view this thing that you want. You can either take a look at all the things that are not working well with this thing, all the ways that you don't have the money you're after, or you don't have the partner you want in your life, or you don't have a good car, or you don't have a great house, whatever that thing is, you can look at it as all the things that are wrong and all the things that are missing, and that does not bring what you want closer to you. In fact, your non-conscious mind is, it's almost like a huge puppy dog that's trying to find things that you are thinking about. So your conscious mind drives your non-conscious mind, and usually through questions. And unfortunately, we often ask rather poor questions. Why does this always happen to me? Oh my gosh. I can't believe. And unfortunately, that prompts your non-conscious mind to look for things that are similar. So if you're really irritated, it brings up all these other things that irritate you because it's trying to match that emotional, spiritual radiance that you're putting out right now. Your emotions are your beacon that you're sending out to the universe in terms of whether you're ready to receive what you're after or wanting to push it away and enjoy the journey a little bit longer because that's a choice that you have. You know, you are an incredible manifester. You are a little chunk of God here on earth and spirit is flowing through you all the time. And the better you are at aligning with that spirit, the better you are at attracting what it is you want into your life. And everything that comes into your life is there to help you learn and grow and expand and become. It's all serving really valuable purpose, including not having come up quite as rapidly as you think you'd like it to show up. That serves a purpose too, because sometimes you're insisting that it show up in just this way, when in reality there's another solution that could be much better for you, and you have to open your awareness to be ready to receive it. So there's two different things that are going. Either you're focusing on all the things that don't work, or you're focusing on all the things that are working for you right now. And it doesn't mean that everything is perfect and everything is manifested to the nth degree. I shared a, a practice with you earlier in one of my other videos where you're thinking about something that you really want to have happen. Maybe what you really, really want is a new car because your car is just not working too well for you anymore. So on a scale of one to 10, where one is you've decided you need a new car and 10 is you have the car that you've always wanted, like better than you could ever have imagined, where are you on that scale of one to 10? Pick a number, the first one that jumps into your head, and then ask the question, why did you pick such a high number? Because as soon as you decide, boy, I need a new car, did you notice how your thoughts start looking at all the cars around you and you go, wow, that BMW, that's a sweet car. You know, that that uh, Prius, man, that's a practical car. Love the space. That's such a cool. You start gravitating and noticing what's out there. 
Noticing is a sign that you're starting to attract things to you. You're picking up on what is present and available to you. This or something better. Then you start researching. You start talking to people who own that kind of car. You start networking. You go to car shows. You, you start doing more to engage with a car. You go to the dealer. You go online and check out the different models and colors and styles and all that. You rent one for a while to get a feel for it and make sure that's really the one you want. You explore financing options. You talk to people about your experience of what it is you're looking for. And all of that gets your energy up. As long as you're excited about it, you're enthusiastic about it. This is your joy. This is your passion. This is your love coming to fruition. And there is no greater attractor than that wonderful sensation of love and joy and appreciating what you have in the moment, finding something to be excited about and joyous over right now, even though you don't have the keys to the car and it's not sitting in your garage right now. It doesn't have to be for you to have those feelings right now. And feelings are a big part of how spirit communicates with you and truly the way you attract everything to you. So that's the secret behind how the law of attraction works. It is a sensation and a feeling based thing that is based on atoms and you're actually attracting atoms to you and helping to manifest that physical item. Sounds a little complicated perhaps, but hopefully I've done a good job of explaining it. And several people joined me. David Plush, thank you. I don't know if I can say your name, name correctly. Ala Anilira Cohn, thank you. Brian Basilico and Sandra Heyman. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was useful. Please do like the video, comment, share it with people, and let me know if you have any questions. If I did not explain this to you clearly enough, that's entirely my fault. I got this information as a massive download instantaneously, 360 degrees, and trying to find the right words and examples and stories to explain it can be a little challenging. So. If I didn't do a good job, let me know and I'll do my best to explain it in another way. Thanks a bunch for tuning in and I will share more things that I learned during my stroke when I had a conversation with God. Take care.